Well, a quick and big response by Mammoth Lakes Fire Department and Mammoth Lakes Police Department personnel took place this morning on the report of a gas leak. Now, reports say that the, a backhoe hit a gas line while working on the new parking lot at the village at Mammoth. Now, thankfully, there were no major problems. Again, our local fire and police officers quickly on scene and took care of that problem. Well, the press release notes that health care in the Eastern Sierra advanced last week with the launch of a planned breast health center in the Northern Inyo Health Care District. Plans for the center were unveiled during a regional medical providers dinner hosted by the Northern Inyo Health Care District. Now, such centers, the press release notes, more commonly found in cities provide in-depth breast health care from screening and diagnosis to breast cancer treatment and supportive resources. Breast surgeons and radiology specialists lead most centers. Now, this is what Northern Inyo Healthcare District can now offer to the communities in and around the Eastern Sierra. Dr. J.K. Harness, a globally recognized breast cancer surgeon specializing in breast preserving operations, signed on to serve as the center's consulting surgeon. Dr. Harness joins Dr. Stuart Souders, a radiologist specializing in dedicated breast imaging, and Rosie Graves, Northern Inyo Healthcare District's new patient navigator, and rounding out the center's leadership team. Educational resources, guidance, and emotional support are given to patients so that they can make the best decisions for their health. The press release notes, Dr. Harness will provide a variety of breast surgeries designed to remove cancer and give the patients options for either preserving the breast or, if the patient prefers, removing it completely. Referrals to the center may come from any facility, not necessarily limited to in uh, to health care providers in Inyo and Mono counties. Now, Northern Inyo Health Care District's Chief Executive Officer Kevin S. Flanagan, MD, MBA, said passion drives this new effort. The idea is to coordinate all of this, take the advanced technology and equipment we have and mix it with the passion we have along with the community support and with the primary care providers who are so wedded to the care of their patient and begin offering these services by late September, end quote. Urge you to see our website, sierrawave.net for this important new press release. And a great story from our nationally recognized Inyo County Register of Voters, Cami Foote, a wilderness civics effort, if you will. Foote, the Register of Voters, notes that every year hundreds of thousands of people embark on extended hiking expeditions. Consequently, they are often in the wilderness during election season. Long distance hikers called through hikers travel many trails, including the Pacific Trust Trail and John Muir Trail. Now crossing paths with long distance hikers, footnotes is common in Inyo County, home to Mount Whitney, the highest peak in the continental U.S., as well as Kearsarge Pass, a popular route for hiker resupply on the PCT, as well as the John Muir Trail. Now most long distance hikers began their expeditions early in 2016, footnotes, before the primaries and conventions, spending months in the backcountry. Consequently, through hikers are less likely to be up to date on state elections, voter registration and requirements, and vote by mail deadlines. Now, during a recent Inyo County voter registration drive at the Bishop Twin Theater, through hikers and rock climbers stopped by and asked questions about voting while away from home. Now, realizing there is sparse election information directed to through hikers, Chuck Levin, a friend and longtime voting advocate, as well as Cami Foote, decided to hike into the John Muir wilderness to spread the word about voting in this important national election. Now, the National Park Service and U.S. Forest Service provided information that was helpful in developing their idea. Foote said she and Levin wanted to raise awareness, but as avid hikers, did not want to disrupt anyone's wilderness journey. Now, the first step was designing bold T-shirts, inviting hikers to approach them. Their T-shirts read, through hiking, ask me about voting, and a great place to register to vote. They stocked up on organic fruit, generously donated by the Owens Valley Growers Cooperative and Independence, so they could serve as trail angels. Again, urge you to see our website, sierrawave.net, for more on this wonderful wilderness civics effort story.
Well, the press release notes that each year more than 440,000 people volunteer for the National Park Service. And this year, from among them, the National Park Service recognized Manzanar volunteers Saburo and Ann Sasaki with the prestigious Hartzog Enduring Service Award. NPS Director John Jarvis presented the award on August 9th in Washington, D.C. Manzanar Superintendent Bernadette Johnson as well as volunteer coordinator Carrie Anderson joined Saburo and Ann for the, set, uh, for the ceremony. Now, since 2005, the Sasakis have volunteered at Manzanar between mid-April and mid-June. Sabaro spends most of his time talking with visitors, answering questions, and presenting interpretive and educational programs uh, for up to 1,500 people each year and staffs the Visitor Center, assists with Manzanar History Association operations, and has completed dozens of major projects for Manzanar's library, museum, archives, oral history, and photo collections. Together, the Sasakis have volunteered more than 3,000 hours. They also prevent, uh, present programs around the country. It was in April of 1942 when Saburo was a seven-year-old farm boy in San Fernando that the U.S. Army, the press release notes, uprooted his family. For three years and seven months, the Sasakis, family number 3831, were among the more than 11,000 Japanese Americans exiled to Manzanar. Saburo attended second, third, and fourth grades in the camp. The Sasakis left Manzanar in October of 1945 for Cleveland, Ohio. That's where Saburo Aledo met and they both went on to become engineers for General Motors and today they travel 2,250 miles each way to Manzanar from their home in Rochester Hills, Michigan. And again, there's more on this press release on our website, sierrawave.net. We'll be back with a weather report.